you know, I say download the eBay app, download the Amazon app, the Amazon seller app, and, you know, start using the barcode scanner just to kind of find out what it is you can sell or just kind of open your mind up as far as the possibility of what you can be selling and, you know, ways you can make money just in your house. Welcome to the We Got Problems podcast with co-host Curtis G. Martin, Rhonda L. Brown, and Khalif Johnson Sr. The one and only podcast where solutions get discussed to our community's everyday troubles. Each week, you will hear mind-blowing conversations and actionable tips and strategies that you can implement in your daily life to become more effective. We got problems and we got solutions. All right, you guys, welcome to the show. This is We Got Problems, the podcast. I am Curtis G. Martin. I'm here with my co-host, Rhonda L. Brown. Hey, everybody. My other co-host, Mr. Khalif Johnson Sr. Peace y'all. How y'all doing? And we have a special guest in the house today, Brandon McWilliams, known as Bamazon. What's up, my brother? Hey, man. How you doing, man? How you doing today? Hey, why don't you go ahead and tell the people a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Okay, cool. So, yeah, my name is Brandon McWilliams, like you said before. I'm from College Park, Georgia. Um, and, you know, I sell products online, eBay and Amazon, mainly Amazon for right now. Um, I got started selling products online back in 2008 when I was in my dorm room and just looking for, you know, a way to make money without having to go to work and take all my focus away from school. So um, I started off like selling products like, um, you know, when uh, like other kids like shoes, clothing and textbooks and things of that nature. And I got started on Amazon around 2000 and, uh, 2015. Um, I started taking it serious around 2017, man. And, uh, you know, it pretty much sums me up as far as me and what I do. And, you know, I teach other people how to sell products online as well. So so when you got started, what 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 was the reason for jumping in Amazon? I said, no, I know you said you was a college student and 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 looking for some ways to make some money, probably so you don't have to waste your time working. But what was that key factor to picking Amazon? Honestly, man, just the hype around it. You know, um, I started off on eBay. So I was doing eBay for like almost 10 years before I even knew that I could sell on Amazon, you know, um, and, you know, I started watching YouTube, you know, instead of just kind of taking what I know, I started looking for other information related to what I was doing. And I came across Amazon, you know, just watching people on YouTube and just trying it out myself. Um, you know, the first year I did it, I lost a lot of money because I didn't really know what I was doing. But but the dream, you know, just just to, just the hype around it, honestly, and, you know, how it impacts global economy you know it's like the number one retailer at the moment so once i found out i could sell products on amazon i started giving it a try um you know just because i didn't want to be limited to ebay you know after having 19 years on ebay at that time you know i already saw the ups and downs with ebay or whatever and amazon is more scalable you know like ebay um amazon is more so based on like when i make a purchase or a sale on amazon um it's more numbers driven as opposed to you know what i think it can sell for and things of that nature it's like more numbers behind the statistics of, of amazon and you know for the most part so like yeah you know just looking for something to do past ebay you know i was already killing ebay for the nine ten years at that time and you know i started watching youtube just trying to perfect my craft and you know, it was a lot of hype around Amazon. So that's really what made me give it a try. So do you sell your own products that you manufacture? Or do you sell other people's products? So no, I don't do private label. You know, um, I don't do private label. I more so do what I call um, arbitrage, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. And that's basically when you go inside of a retail store like uh, CVS, Walgreens, or Dick's Sporting Goods. You just like, you find items that you can flip for a profit on Amazon. So you can do that the retail arbitrage way when you go to the store physically. And online arbitrage is when you do it online. You're just kind of comparing things on different websites. You know, Amazon doesn't do a price match. You know what I mean? So, you know, so basically doing basically that route. You know, um, I don't make my own products, but I do help people that do make their own products on sell products on Amazon. So a lot of gurus out there, you know, they'll try to have you just find a random product and, you know, do it that way. I don't really believe in that method. I work with people that uh, already have like, you know, products or a brand they're pushing. And I just show them how to, you know, sell that stuff on Amazon. So, no, I don't create my own products, though. When you're going um, in those stores, when you're going in those stores looking for those, how do you how do you find out what prices uh, you can make money at? Um, so, um, so it's different apps. You can use an Amazon seller app or it's another app that I've been using lately called Seller Amp. It's, it's a third party app. So with Amazon, most of the apps that you use to become successful in Amazon are third party apps. So seller app will tell you, you know, how much the item's going for, how many other people are selling that item for, or, you know, how many other people are selling that item and what they're selling it for, um, how many units are sold per month. And it'll tell me, based on my criteria, it'll tell me how much I should buy it for. So 
I got a criteria where I, I demand at least 30% profit or $3, $3 profit, you know, on each item. So I have my criteria and I use an app. So you scan the barcode, you know, that's pretty much how you compare items. You scan the barcode using either just the Amazon seller app or a seller app or, you know, whatever app you, you know, is your preference. And um, that's pretty much what I use um, mm -hmm. when it comes down to that. Mm -hmm. You're on Amazon. Like that's your primary focus as far as that go. But you said you work off eBay. You did eBay for years. Do you recommend people use any other apps to kind of sell theirs or do you strictly focus in on Amazon? No, nah, I mean, honestly, man. So the name of my program is called Resellers Bootcamp. And I encourage people to use different platforms because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a strong learning curve when it comes to Amazon. You got to think I was already 10, 11 years strong before I, you know, before I started doing, before I got good at Amazon. So it's pretty good to always have like a, I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. So for instance, Amazon ain't, isn't perfect. So it's sometimes I might have an item that I'm no longer able to sell because of the approval of the brand, or it might be like a return that I can't really sell for brand new on Amazon. So that's when I got eBay or Poshmark for the cross listings, but when I'm teaching people, I don't try to get them confused with learning a million different platforms at one time because they each have their own learning curve. I try to base, um, I try to tell you a recommendation of which platform you should use, you know, based on your specific niche. So if somebody doing used shoes and clothing, and you know, I wouldn't tell them to go on Amazon. It's a big market, you know, like thrifting or even what I was doing back in college. You know, sometimes I'll buy it. Sometimes people would consign with me, like they'll give me, you know, their shoes, clothes, or whatever, and they won't get paid until I sell the item. So. I wouldn't tell that person to go to Amazon. I would tell them that maybe you do go to Poshmark or eBay. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. I never heard of Poshmark, but that's that's cool. You dropped that. So you would say eBay for used and then uh, newer products, maybe uh, Amazon? Well, it just kind of depends. It depends. All right. So the main thing that it depends on is your method of sourcing. Um, if you're doing like thrifting or yard selling, then eBay. Arbitrage, that business model works well on both eBay and Amazon. But when you're starting off on Amazon, I always recommend using eBay as a backup because you're, you're going to be restricted from selling a lot of different brands. So say as soon as you open up your Amazon store, you're not going to be able to sell Nike or Adidas. You know what I mean? Because you have to you have to find a way to get approved for it, which I show people in my program and whatnot. But you might have a, an, an amazing deal, you know, and I, I normally encourage people to go to outlet stores, and things of that nature, and they might find an amazing deal or an amazing product that they can flip on eBay. Another thing that makes me very successful in the Amazon business is um, couponing and things of that nature. So, you know, oftentimes I can create deals. And my mom is a real frugal type person. She was doing couponing. She's been doing couponing for a minute. For a minute. And there's a lot of people out there that's doing actually like coupon courses and things of that nature. So that's, that's one way that I increase my profit margin on Amazon. So with doing all of this, like on Amazon, eBay, how important is it for like is customer feedback like is that so, is that a big thing yeah of course it's always a big thing so normally when i sell products on amazon so you got two different ways to sell products on amazon you got amazon fba that's when you send products to the amazon fulfillment center that means fulfilled by amazon so they have fulfillment centers throughout the country really the world you know so i just pretty much focus on buying the inventory um if you're doing fbm so FBA, they're going to charge more fees because of the extra work they put in. If you're doing FBM, then you have to manage your own customer service, and it's especially on eBay. eBay, your your customer service is very important because if a customer has a question or concern, and you don't you don't adhere to it in time. Um, you know, eBay is kind of algorithm based as well, so like you kind of, you know, like it, it affects your account health and it affects the algorithm, with, which overall affects your sales and performance. So it's it's very important, just like any any other business. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you get bad feedback? Is there anything you can do? Like, because I, I, like I said, I, I stayed eBay and I never graduated Amazon just because I, I knew I needed time once I started researching it. So what can you do if you get any bad feedback? So like um, if I'm doing, if I'm using Amazon FBA and I get bad feedback, I can normally appeal that because it's not on me. It's on Amazon at that point. Uh, with, with eBay, I mean, the biggest thing you want to do is prevent bad feedback. You know, you, you prevent bad feedback with customer service and just making sure you understand what the customer wants. Um, but, I mean, once somebody leaves you bad feedback on eBay, it's rarely anything you can do about it unless the customer is wrong. You know, so, for instance, I had a situation where USPS um, made a lot of mistakes in the month. Like, they, they, a lot of packages I sent off, like, just arrived to the customer extremely late. So, the customer is looking at me like, um, you know, Forget you, you know, you're not sending me my item. I'm going to give you bad feedback. And the item would get sent to him a couple of days later. And I see the tracking number and it's not my fault. So I can appeal that through eBay, you know, but but that's rare. That's rare. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So what are some of the benefits for being a prime seller on Amazon? Oh, great question, man. So like you can only become a prime seller if you're selling through Amazon FBA. Um, and the benefits are like you, you, you have, you're, you're eligible for what they call the buy box. So if you have a shop on Amazon, you go, you click the button that says buy now or add to cart, whichever item, because there's multiple sellers selling that same product. Um, whichever product ends up in your, in your, um, cart, you know, you, you wouldn't really know that as a customer, but that, that seller just want a buy box. So, um, so Amazon Prime is pretty, it's very important because um, customers will choose Amazon Prime over a price, over a price decrease. You know what I mean? So they'll buy something 35 bucks, Amazon Prime, that they could have got for 30 bucks without using Amazon Prime. So it's very important because that's what the customers are looking for. In fact, um, I want to say about 75% of U.S. households are have someone in the household that's a Prime member. So it's very important if you're, um, if you're um, selling products through Amazon and you're eligible for Amazon Prime shipments because, you know, that's really the number one thing that – that's one of the number one things that uh, boosted, you know, Amazon as far as, like, you know, where people shop and things of that nature. They even pass Walmart these days. And as far as growing up, I never heard of – you know, I don't think anybody surpassed Walmart until th this point. You know what I mean? Hey, hey so, so um, with that Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. Amazon Prime, I was hearing at one time that, once you become a seller and you get that prime, that whatever that product is, like say if all four of us were selling that same product, that we just in line with that product. So I make one sale, you make the next one, he make one, she make one, then it keep rotating. Is that true? Yeah, the buy box rotates. Um, the buy box rotates. One thing, if you if you if for anyone out there that's selling on Amazon, one thing you want to make sure is um you want to see if Amazon's controlling the controlling the that uh the buy box, they call it the buy box. And that's what, you know, we, basically the people that are eligible for Amazon Prime as far as the sellers, um, that's considered the buy box. So if you, it, so say for instance, you bought some Colgate toothpaste and it came, and uh, when the sale was made, it came, you know, from my store. That means I want a buy box for that particular matter. So um, there's tools out there that you can use to, to um, find this information out. But for instance, if Amazon wins 100% of the buy box rotation, and I pretty much encourage people to stay away from those products because you can't really compete against Amazon. But if Amazon doesn't sell that particular product or they share the buy box, meaning they, they sold maybe maybe 40% was one through Amazon and 10% here, 5% there, then that's okay. But for the most part, you want to make sure that Amazon is not hogging the buy box, which would, which they will do. No, so so a backup question to that, wow, because that's kind of crazy. So will they um, find a product that's selling real good? Like I created this product, it's selling real good, then all of a sudden they start selling it, then all of a sudden they take over the buy box? You mean if you created the product? Yeah. Now, if you created the product, you as a brand owner, you got full control over who can sell your product and who can't. Okay, okay. You know, if you're the brand owner, that, that's called private label when you produce your own products. And you sell it on Amazon, it's called private label. Okay. When you do the uh fulfilled by Amazon, do you have to have like a certain amount of money to start the account or no, you don't. Um, you can start with you know, whatever you you know, whatever. Um, you start with whatever, you know, but if you have a low budget and if you have a low budget, I encourage you to get on eBay because if you're doing eBay, um, you know, you can you can you, you might be sourcing your inventory at yard sales or the goodwill and things of that nature. So if you if you really tight on the budget, like less than a thousand bucks, I encourage you to get started on Amazon, honestly. And um, and um, one thing you might and I might even encourage you to do fulfillment by merchant, because I mean if you limited it on capital, it, it could take a while to sell the inventory, you know. But if you got the product in your hand, you can always return that item. You can sell it on the street or where have you. But if once you send it off to Amazon, it's kind of up to them to. It's kind of up to them to, um, you know, it's kind of up to the market as far as how, how much your item sells for. And if you got a limited budget, you might not have had enough money to pay for coaching and mentoring. So you might be you might be in for a lot of mistakes like I was making when I first started. If you if you have a limited budget. So if you have a limited budget and uh, I really encourage you to start off on eBay, honestly. What, or, would, you, what would you what budget would you suggest? What budget would I suggest? Mm hmm. Um. I mean, um, at least a thousand bucks. You know, what I mean, it, it just depends. It just depends. Like, um, it really depends on you and how much, how much, um, you know, how much risk you're able to tolerate. So, um, if if you send five hundred to a thousand dollars worth of products to Amazon 
and you can't afford for those items to not sell within 30 days and stick to eBay. But it's it's all about it's all about your risk tolerance, like how long you can wait for your products to sell. Okay. So with that being said, do you recommend customers have their own custom packaging or do you rather go with the Amazon packaging? Which one do you think sells better? Uh, Amazon doesn't provide you any type of packaging. So you got to have your own custom packaging, uh, which is more so like boxing and like, you know, by, basically your boxes, your bubble wrap, your uh, um, packing, not what's it called? Um, poly, poly bags, you know, but yeah, Amazon doesn't provide you any type of supplies or anything like that. So, Inside so no, I think what he mean, like sometimes I get packages and they say Amazon on them. Yeah, they do that at the warehouse. You have no okay. control of it. You send them, you send them boxes full of inventory, and once they scan the inventory and your inventory sells, they do that. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, you they do all of the individual, um, you know, selling or whatever. So you send them a big box and they send those, they send the people the little prime boxes and things of that nature. Okay. You don't really have control over it once it reaches their warehouse. They they handle that. They do the picking, the packing, the shipping, and the customer service. So say if I was doing FBA, can yeah. I can I build that account up and then sell it to somebody? Yeah, of course. Um, if you naturally have companies and marketplaces that you can sell your uh, Amazon business on, I can't really think of any off top. Um, but you know, but you definitely, but you do have to have like so. So essentially, what you would do, you wouldn't sell them your account you would pretty much sell them the entire business. So say for instance, you got a separate business specifically for Amazon. Um, you don't sell your account. There might be rules for that, but you'll sell them the whole entire business. So they'll buy your business and that will come with the store. If you had to write a book tomorrow, what would it be about? I'm writing a book right now. It's called basically, um, basically it's about just success in general. So I got an ebook on Amazon right now, just kind of teaching people from start to finish. I only charge 25 bucks for it. It's an ebook. It's kind of showing you how to get started, the different business models, things of that nature. And I got a book right now. I'm still deciding on the title. It's just basically a self-help book, you know, just showing people, you know, different rules that I use uh, to succeed, you know, whether it's personal time and meditation to keep your mind clear or networking and building relationships. So those that's the type of book I'm writing currently. Hey, I don't I don't want to uh, if, if you don't have anybody helping you just know Rhonda. She's that's what she do. Right. She helps people. Uh, like, I already well, got a coach. I OK, got that's, a coach. that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final, it is out right now. Um, yeah. Young lady. She, I met her in this um, group in a, in a book club that I'm in. Actually, All right, book, cool. But this ain't my last book. So, you know, okay. you know just throwing it out there. Let you know she she kind of in that space. Right. Like OK. Uh, OK. So you said you're writing a book. Right. So if you had to be remembered for one thing, just one. What would you want to be remembered for? Um, just somebody that came here to, uh, to not only help himself, but help other people thrive, succeed, you know. If I just had one thing, just somebody that, that was here to try to help other people, you know, attain some type of wealth, whether it's, you know, whether they're just getting a, a boost in their career or starting a business. Respect. All right, I'm going to go with, um, tell us about um, one influencer or mentor that helped um, get you to the next level. I never really had, I can't really give anybody that type of credit. You know, I pay people money, but I can't call a mentor. So honestly, um, honestly, I gotta, I gotta give myself that credit. I don't have any mentors. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've tried to, you know, I've tried, you know, I've applied, I, I paid for a lot of coaching, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but as far as somebody putting their hand on me and, you know, really want me to see nobody, nobody. Uh, and I don't have any entrepreneurs in my family or anything like that as well. So I can't give nobody that type of credit, you know what I'm saying? But if anything, I do like I do like David Shans. You know his book club is very um, David Shans. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with him. He got a thing called Morning Meetup, and I like the books that he recommends, and I like the fact that he can bring a lot of people together. But as far as like calling him a mentor, like I can't call him on the phone right now and ask for help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I can't yeah, really yeah, call yeah. him a mentor. Yeah, I'm actually in the group. I just haven't been in there in a couple of months. But oh yeah, I heard. Yeah, you know, I know yeah. D. Mathis. I, I think I met you through D. Mathis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's one question that you wish we would have asked you and how would you have answered it? I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I got, I got real deal, like um tunnel vision. I can't even really think about the past, past questions. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. But I'm going to take you right here. So do you have any type of mentoring or, or coaching program? Absolutely. So I got a program. Um, it's called a reseller's bootcamp. Um, I train people how to get, uh, how to sell products on eBay and Amazon and you know, if you if, you know, if I figured that another platform would be good for you as well, 
then, you know, I would suggest that. Um, anyone that's interested, they can uh, visit my website, www.makemoneywithbam.net, makemoneywithbam.net, and, um, you know, they can get started like that way. Um, also, I provide a lot of content on YouTube, Instagram, and, you know, like I mentioned before, I have my ebook. So uh, right now I'm doing one-on-one -on -one and group coaching. Um, this is the lowest the price is going to be. So anyone is watching this interview, you know, take advantage right now because the price is going up, <laughs> you know, going up. And once it's up, it's stuck. So anybody want to hop on board, you know, and it, but at the same time, it's not always about the money. If, um, you know, if, um, if you got people that's out there and they support my videos or support me um, or whatever without me asking, then I'm always, you know, my, I'm, I'll always be, you know, be cool and, you know, try to help, you know, someone that I see struggling or, you know, trying or whatnot. And then, I, you know, I, I try to build relationships as well. You know, I'm not just here by myself. Like, I try to build relationships with other Amazon and eBay sellers as well to try to sharpen my skill. It's, it's always going to be something I don't know. And, uh, you know, so that's what I'm into. Okay. Like, you you mentioned a couple of your social medias. Can you, do you mind sharing all the places where we can find you? Uh, where yeah, all yeah, our yeah. listeners can find you? Um, BAM Concepts. That's B-A-M-C-O-N-C-E-P-T-S. Um, you know, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. My regular, my first and last name, Brandon McWilliams. Um, YouTube, BAM, the BAM Concepts TV. Um, it's pretty much all I could think of. Uh, I think link, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Brandon McWilliams on LinkedIn. Uh, hashtag Bamazon. You'll pretty much you'll find me if you just find if you start typing the hashtag Bamazon in. You know, I try to make myself visible and. You know, I had the same name for a while, you know, as far as Bam. Like, Bam actually is my initials. Brandon Alexander McWilliams is my name. So I've been kind of rocking with the same name for a minute. So it shouldn't be too hard to find me. <laughs> hey, hey, before we close out, so it, it's Bamazon. Where did that name come in at? Uh, You know, my name Bam, and I sell products on Amazon. So, you know, it's <laughs> one of those street nicknames. You know, people, you know, just, you know, they just, that's where they start. That's, and that's another thing that kind of made me go all in on it. It's like, I got to live up to the name now, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, David Shans, he'll call me that every blue moon. And he got he got some powerful friends, man. So, you know, and it's kind of catchy. It's easy to remember. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do the coaching program. You're going to remember Bamazon. You're going to remember to, to learn from Bamazon before before somebody else would, would you know, would just using their regular name. So I figured it just kind of go well with the brand. I'm, I'm actually in the process of – um. Um, so me and my brother, little younger brother, are actually in the process of um, acquiring an Amazon truck, 18 wheeler. So I'm just sticking to the brand, man. You know, I'm just sticking. I'm just staying in my lane. Yeah, there we go. Hey, before we close it out, um, uh, what's something you want to leave the people with and tell them about you or about what you do? Man, no matter uh, what you're doing, man, um, always, always know that we can always do better. You know, don't beat yourself up for what you don't know. Um, and just try. You know, I feel like most people have a fear of failure. Or a fear of being like laughed at and all that type of stuff. If anything, man, stay in your lane and just like work it, you know, work at whatever you, you want to work at and, and just keep on trying. You know, like even when things get hard, like when you just keep on trying, like you'll get opportunities that you never even thought existed just by putting in that effort. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and, you know, once you make it, try to help somebody else out. It's, you know, it's the name of the game. All right, cool. Rhonda, you have anything you want to lead the people with? Uh, first, I want to thank I want to thank Bam for coming. Um, that was a lot of good information. I appreciate uh, it. But yeah, like we can make money doing anything. You just got to find your niche and go for it. Yeah. All and right, I try Mr. to help people find. I try to help people find their niche. Like I guess I will say this before I go. Um, as far as like if you want to get into reselling and you don't really know what your niche should be, I say just look through your trash. You know, you look through your closet, look through your bathroom, whatever you have access of. You can start by listing those, but obviously, if you buy so many, if you buy so much of those ty types of items, like if you're someone that always buys handbags, or you're someone that's always into buying candles, you know, I say download the eBay app, download the Amazon app, the Amazon seller app, um, and you know, start using the barcode scanner just to kind of find out what it is you can sell, or just kind of open your mind up as far as the possibility of what you can be selling and you know ways you can make money just in your house. All right, Mr. Trash Vegan, Mr. Khalif Johnson Sr., what you want to leave the people with? 
Man, it, you, it was a wealth of information. I really, really appreciate you, big bro, for this information and giving it oh, to man. the people and taking your time out to talk about like some of the stuff that we don't really look at in our community, looking at some stuff that we could be discarding or we think of as cheap and we could be really making a whole career off of it. And I thank you for that, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. No, nah, no problem, man. Appreciate you guys for having me. Yep, I want to thank you too, Bam. Um, appreciate you coming on. And you guys, uh, make sure you guys go follow Bam. We'll leave all his contacts in the show notes. Uh, if you're looking to make some money on eBay and Amazon, make sure you get in his coaching program. And he said it, and I hear it all the time, something we don't listen to is never give up on anything you're doing, right? Once you give up, then it won't work, right? This is we got problems, and we got solutions, and we out. We out, man. If you ain't flipping, you tripping. From the team at CRC Empire, we want to thank you for listening. To stay connected with us, like, share, and subscribe to the We Got Problems podcast. You can find us on social media platforms at Curtis Martin 247, at Rhonda Wright's Official, and at the underscore trash underscore vegan underscore. We got problems and we got solutions.